Welcome back. Let's implement backward propagation. Let's name this function backprop. And again, it won't take any arguments. Let's go here and define this. Okay. First of all, we need to calculate layer sigmas and layer gradients, of course. So layer sigmas for the uh, the output layer is always whether you use ReLU or the sigmoid function, half max function, whatever. The the sigmas for the output layer is basically the activated output layer minus the actual target value, the pred prediction minus the target. So again, we have. Let's assume that we already have the targets here. So we'll just. Uh, work with that. So we will first of all start building our layer sigmas. So we will push back. Uh, the prediction which is stored in the last activation layer. So last activation layer can be accessed by layer activation size minus one. And we'll subtract that. From that, we'll subtract the outputs, which, if you don't remember, is our class variable here. Outputs member function, a member variable. Okay, so we have got our last layer sigma. So of course, backpropagation starts from the last and it proceeds to very first layer. Now, what we can do is we can uh, just throw in a for loop, starting from layer activation from the second last layer basically so second last layer is uh, layer activations minus two the index of that because the last layer we have already built it here so layer activations size minus two and it will be greater than or equal to one because we we'll take care about the first layer on separately and decrement i each time okay so well to calculate the backward propagation prop uh, propagation uh, for if you if you remember in the previous video if you watch the previous video we did add bias layer before uh, you know calculating the forward pass after each activation layer which which means the each input layer of the next layer in inputs of the next layer so again to calculate the back propagation to uh, for maintaining the dimensions we need to add uh, columns to uh, you know just to maintain the dimension so that it won't throw any errors so let's just add a column of zeros so insert calls zero okay not this double and this whole if you watched the previous video you already know what I'm doing here I will just fill the column with ones and that's it. It's just repetitive. Okay. Now, uh, backward propagation proceeds from the last layer to the first layer. So we cannot just push back. We have to insert it in the beginning. So that's why we'll use, uh, we won't push back in layer sigmas. We will just insert it before the first element. Layer sigmas, insert. And so this function takes the iterator or the pointer before which you want to insert. So the first element is layer sigma dot begin. So we'll insert sigma at zero. We we'll use the back propagation formula here. So multiply it uh, by the weights 
this particular layer it is basically the formula not something that I am doing on my own layer weights at I times transpose and yeah oh, let me just pause this video for a second I have got to do something so I was just ad adjusting the mic so yeah uh, we have already calculated the transpose okay so we are multiplying okay what is this layer sigma at 0 sigma at 0 into layer weights we are multiplying the matrices here and uh, Then after that we need to perform element wise multiplication uh, into the gradients with the gradients of the activation of previous layer or the inputs of this layer does not matter. So the operator for element wise multiplication is this in Armadillo. This basically means a modulus operation uh, operator but it in Armadillo it performs matrix wise multiplication. So the inner product or the dot product is performed by this operator which is the basic multiplication operator here we have already seen it it performs matrix multiplication but this performs uh, element wise operation so we need to calculate the deactivation function relu grad of the activation of previous layer or the input of this layer so do the same thing layer inputs at i this is amazing okay so let's just <coughs> add in the semicolon here. Now we had add, added the columns here just to maintain the dimensionality. We can remove those columns here. here. Layer inputs at i dot shed columns, which is a function for sh uh, removing columns, the shed call and the uh, index of that column. So the first column is zero. Now, as you might be wondering, we have started from the second last layer and we are going up to the second layer, not the first layer, because there are no uh, sigmas for the input layer itself. Input is input, nothing matters, right? We cannot change that. So that's it. And now let's calculate the gradients, which we'll use in a uh, lot of optimization algorithms, such as uh, gradient descent or momentum or atom i is less than layer activation and let's calculate the size of it size minus 1 and let's increment i by 1 ok so let's just calculate a temporary weight variable I don't create uh, a lot of uh, temporary variables unless it's very necessary right now it's very necessary let's store the layer weights here so if you remember uh, while building the network we did add a bias column or a bias row uh, sorry a bias row in the weight uh, variable now we don't calculate gradients of biases uh, because it destroys the entire function of the bias variables, the bias weights. So we will just replace those bias values with zeros and uh, before we calculate the gradients and then after that we will replace it again with the original value. So that's how I calculated this variable temp weight. So let's just shed the row. So for shedding the column there was shed call and for shedding a row there is shed row and again we can just do this and insert zeros instead of that so we've already shedded the rows so now we'll insert rows insert row again before the first row and then the syntax is very similar to column here you write row and the type and the size temp weights now here will be first because we need, need width not the height and then fill it with not ones but zeros 
I guess I have uh, missed a column here. Okay, yeah, and fill zeros. Mm, let me just check it again. We have this here, and then we have this here. Okay, now it's fine. Now, finally, let's calculate the most important thing that is layer gradients. So, layer gradients push back it will be slightly complicated I guess so let me just use I'm just using the mathematical formula here again so layer activations at I transpose this for getting it to the right dimensions and then multiplying it by layer Sigma at I which we have already calculated in the previous loop and then what we're going to do is we will add lambda which is our regularization parameter if it is set to zero it this will just cancel out times temp weight and then divided by the size of outputs itself size of output means the number of output so the we use the height here and oh. okay so I guess we have this here again I'm missing some things uh, first of all these let me just check the brackets are at the right places so the activations times uh, well first transpose and then layer sigmas at I plus this and then uh, let me just add this I just like adding brackets so that you know, make the things more clear and then let me add the semicolon here so we have our backward pass it is basically the mathematical uh, equation for backward propagation so we have it here and in the next video we will build the cost function and then there are a lot of things to do such as building the gradient descent and then maybe we will also implement a momentum uh, so stay tuned for the next one thanks for watching